Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Tampa Bay Real Producers podcast. This, of course, is the podcast that is made for real producers, by real producers, and with none other than Tampa Bay's real producers, such as our guest today. We get to hang out with Miss Kristen Comstock is at the house. How you doing, Kristen? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. It's great awesome. to have you here. It's Thank been a little you. while since we've seen each other. It has been a long time. I'm I really know. excited. I know. No doubt. I mean, if you could see Kristen here, she's looking gorgeous in her purple <laughs> outfit. I mean, she came in and made us look much better as soon as she <laughs> arrived. So we're uh, glad to have her here. We're going to dive into Kristen's story as we always do. But those of you who follow us might recognize Kristen from a couple of years ago. We featured her as a rising star in Tampa Bay real estate. I think that was back in 2019 yes. uh, at the time. So uh, things have changed in Chris. Not that she's not still a star as she is, but <laughs> things have changed in Kristen's business, which we'll talk about. And uh, there's some really exciting things happening. So Kristen, let's start a little bit for people who might not be as familiar with your story, yeah. just with your background. And Absolutely. so I know that you are got a military background. We talked yes. off camera about how you you were a Marine, so I'm sure yes. people would love that. Well, but once a Marine, always a Marine. Of course, always a Marine. That's a good point. Thank you yes. for fixing that. You're yes. <laughs> so let's start with um, your background. Did you grow up in Tampa Bay? If not, how did you get here? And then we'll eventually get to how you got into real estate. Yeah, absolutely. So I did not grow up in Tampa Bay. I actually am from Louisiana. So I grew up in You can Louisiana. hear the Southern drawl yes, sometimes. Yes, I do. When I get mad, you can definitely <laughs> hear the Southern drawl. Um, so I grew up in Louisiana and um, joined the Marine Corps out of college and so traveled for a long time doing that and met my amazing husband. And then when we- Who was got, also a Marine? Yes, yes, he was a Marine as well. And then when we got stationed here, we kind of planted roots. That's so the Marines is what brought you to Tampa yes, Bay. Okay. Yes. So obviously from McDill, I'm assuming you were yes. working out of, the, out of there. And uh, how long again were you in the Marines? So I was in five years active duty. Okay. What are some of the places that you get to travel to? Oh my goodness. So we were stationed in Japan, Okinawa, Japan for a while. How was that? Um, it was amazing. Yeah. We love Okinawa. I would definitely live there again, actually. Nice. It was very, um, the people there are just so wonderful. They're so friendly. Uh, I joke all the time, you could leave your car unlocked and <laughs> your car would be like with the keys on the seat, with the door shut, like everything nice and tidy. Wow. You know, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, a little different was... than some of the American cities, huh? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything else about like Japan specifically that stood out to you? The food is amazing. Yeah. So I'm a big sushi fan, so yes, I yes. can get that. The American version though of sushi is different, I would imagine, than the real Japanese food, or yes, am I wrong? We actually went to, my business partner and I, we went to a meeting yesterday and went and got sushi and the waitress was asking us how it was. And I was like, comparatively speaking i mean you're doing pretty good <laughs> you have high standards you yeah know? you exactly. were uh, living in the real the, the origin there exactly. for a while exactly so you uh, got to travel to japan saw a lot of the world through your experience in the marines mm -hmm. and then when you came to tampa was real estate the first thing that you got into did you always have an interest in real estate or how did that go down so the real story about how that went down is I got out of the Marine Corps and my husband re-enlisted and he was stationed here at McDill and I decided that I was going to be an amazing stay-at-home wife <laughs> and I was going to cook and I was going to clean and I was going to work out and look amazing and about two weeks into that, I was like, I'm so bored. <laughs> so this isn't going to work for me. Mm -hmm. And so we ended up purchasing our first house at the time and didn't have the best experience. And so I threw myself into the industry and learned and ended up getting licensed and kind of my career took off from there. Yeah. That's funny. I've heard a similar story many times about, you know, top producers who got into real estate because they had a bad experience mm -hmm. buying their first home or buying yep. a home. Um, it's funny how often I, I hear that element of it. It's like, there's got to be a better way. And so you exactly. just figure that you'll provide it yourself, right? Exactly. It's funny how that works. Yes. So you got involved with real estate and was it like an immediate fit for you? Did you have struggles a lot in your early years or did you get some traction pretty quickly? So I definitely had traction really quickly. I ended up being the rookie of the year for the current real estate office I was a part of. Mm -hmm. And I think the Marine Corps background definitely helped me with that. Yeah. You know, just being structured and, you know, not having my own boss. I was my own boss, but I really knew how to structure my day mm -hmm. um, to make my time as successful as possible and to help 
my husband ended up deploying and we didn't have kids. So oh, really? all I had was real estate to focus on. Oh, wow. So, so there was definitely a big life change there, there all was, at the same absolutely. time. Yeah. That's interesting. So I was going to ask you, you mentioned already kind of the time blocking component that I think is really critical for mm-hmm. people to be successful in real estate and knowing how to be disciplined enough to do that. Yes. Seems like the Marines would have drilled that into you in many ways. Literally. Is, <laughs> exactly. Is there anything else specifically to your experience with the Marines that you feel like really has played a role? in your ability to succeed in real estate? Discipline and self-control. Yeah. Absolutely discipline and self-control. Having to be disciplined, not just with your time, um, but your value. You know, I think as new agents, and I've seen this a lot as of recently, is because there is a lot of competition in our industry. It's whatever I have to do to get the listing or whatever I have to do to get the sale. And that is not always the best use of your time. Sure it may actually be a huge time waster. And so if you know and have the discipline to set those boundaries on who is a good fit to work with you, and you can set that high level expectation, not only with the people that you work in the industry, but your clients, I think that is a recipe for success, for sure. Have you found, Kristen, that your background, you know, as a Marine, always once a Marine, always Marine, has that been a catalyst for you to attract certain clients? And do you serve that veteran community a lot? Has that been a niche for you? Yes, it has been a huge area that I really love to serve. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because not everybody is open about the fact that they served our country. Yeah, There's a lot of times you don't know unless you are a veteran and you pick up on something that they say and you're like, wait a minute, are you prior you know, military, did you serve our country? And they're like, oh yeah, but that was a long time ago. I'm like, hold on a second. You- What's up, Rob? We're going to restart. <laughs> Apparently we have a crashed computer over here. The choice of technology. Yes, yes. So we're going to uh, reboot and uh, pick up the conversation with Kristen Comstock. All right, we're back. Uh, coming, <laughs> rejoining with Kristen Comstock. Uh, we think our podcast was sabotaged because we have a Marine in the house, but I don't know. That's just a theory uh, that I have. That's just a theory that I have. So are we live again, Rob, on Facebook? We are live. All right, cool. Well, welcome to the live audience once again. And let's just pick up where we left off, Chris. We were diving into, if I remember, some of the lessons and applications from your background as a Marine and how you, by Jalissa, and how you think um, that has made an impact on your business and how you've grown it. So uh, we'll pick it up from there. Yes, absolutely. We were, I think we were talking a little bit about the discipline it takes to run a successful business. And so that definitely came from my Marine Corps background and the discipline you have have to have when somebody's screaming in your face or telling you to do something you don't want to do. Yes. So, or even learning how to roll with the punches, right? Like exactly. The, seeing the unexpected, like cameras going down and everything and just exactly. learning how to be able to pivot, right? That's, exactly. that's part of yes. the Marine yes. thing because yes. you never really know what's going to happen out I'm there. I'm not flustered at all. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine it would yeah. take a lot yes. uh, to get you flustered yes. for sure. So, we did talk a little bit about how you got yourself licensed. It seems like right around that time, your husband then got he was shipped deployed. out. Yeah, right? he was deployed. And that must have been challenging. It was challenging, but it wasn't something we weren't used to. Um, right. That was one of the reasons why I chose to get actually get out of the Marine Corps because we were both active duty and we were both gone all the time apart from each other. And we just didn't feel it was the best, you know, props to the active du- the dual active duty families that are out there yeah. that both husband and wife are active duty, but we didn't feel that it was the best choice for us and our family. And so that was one of the decision makers in getting out of the Marine Corps and my husband re-enlisted. And so out of that came, he deployed and I stayed, stayed home and that's what it was. Now, did you say earlier that you didn't have kids yet at we that time? We did not have kids at the time. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But that was, that was the plan as you were hoping to. That was the plan. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just having more time together when we were dual active duty, he was right. gone and then I was gone and he was gone and then I was gone. And so we just spent a lot of time apart, especially being newly, newlyweds and yeah. we got married really young. Mm-hmm. And so we just felt like it was the best decision for our family for sure. Yeah, no doubt. That had to be challenging. Mm-hmm. So looking back to how you kind of got some traction on the real estate side. You mentioned that things moved pretty quickly Mm -hmm. and that you were able to get some success right away. And we talked a little bit about how some of that could have been from serving the 
the veteran community mm -hmm. and the real and the, and the mil, you know military community. Yep. Is that where you kind of tapped into first when you think about I how did. you built momentum? Yeah, I did. I t I tapped into that market first, and from there, you know, when we moved here, I didn't know anyone. And so I hear newer agents or agents that are getting into the industry tell me all the time, well, I don't know anyone here. And I'm like, well, that's not an right. excuse. Right. And so, yeah, I, I tapped into the circles that I had at the time and those circles grew. And I connected with people because I, I didn't know anyone sure. in the Tampa Bay area. And so I got to know people and made friends. And then that grew into part of my cheerleaders for my new business that was growing and those people were vital to the success of you know our family and our business family as well and were those people you're talking about like team building with other agents or are you talking about other people other people just okay. in general whether it was other agents or whether it was somebody that i met at church mm -hmm. you know at the the reality was i was working on a startup i had a startup that's how i looked at sure. it sure and from a business background from college, I knew that I had a lot of work to do in order to get myself where I wanted to be. Gotcha. And so then when you, um, when you were building your business and serving that community, is there a particular strategy that really seemed to resonate with you? Was it all referral based and just organic growth? Or did you kind of dive into a particular marketing strategy or something else that really helped accelerate things for you? You asked me this question is bringing me back to the early days in in business. Um, when I first started, it was truly blood, sweat and tears because I was door knocking and I was doing open houses 24-7. Okay. Nice. That's where I got a majority of my business. My first year was open houses. Nice. I just always was in a house that said open house. Yeah. So you would just look for open houses mm -hmm. and go and, you know, make mm -hmm. yourself known, right? Exactly. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. So you were willing to put in the hustle. And I'm sure, again, with your background as a Marine, you kind of knew what that blood, sweat yes. and tears effort yes. was like, yes. and it paid off for you. Um, I know that you were going to transition into some of your, what you're going on now. Right. And I know that you're very focused on team building and wanting to grow an organ, your, grow, your organization. Yes. Did you always have that intent of wanting to get into the team side uh, or was it, did that just come later? It really, the building a real estate team really came organically as a business organization, knowing that I wanted to serve more families and I was losing out on money because I was one person that couldn't serve all the families that needed to be served. Right. And so organically that grew from a part-time assistant to a full-time assistant to having buyer's agents and, and so now the team is bigger than that, but it, it yeah. was an organic growth for sure. Yeah. And it came out of necessity mm -hmm. just based on the volume that you were doing, Correct. right? If, if you're not familiar with Kristen, do you remember what your best year was in terms of My volume? My best year was actually last year and we was were it? just shy of a million in gross commission and we did just under a hundred units. That's awesome. And mm -hmm. that's as a team, I think, even, team, and you're yeah. still doing individual production. I am. At least you were last year. Are you still yes. planning to this year? It will be dramatically decrease this year. Yeah. And I know we're going to talk about some of the other business ventures that I'm out on right now, but yeah, no doubt. Uh, eventually I will not be in production myself. I'll be coaching and growing my team members into better production. I mean, last year alone, Kristen did over, I think it was 60 something transactions right. personally Yes, and in over 20 or what was it? $31 million. Yes. Uh, I mean, that's a lot for an individual producer to do while, lot. while still building a team. Right. And so, so let's talk a little bit about what you're fired up about, which I know is this recent move to LPT, yes. right? You have this uh, beautiful new location that yes. you're fired up about. And so let's tell the audience a little bit yeah. about why, like, well, what was it yeah. about the LPT model that fired you up? And, and where does, as you look forward now into this year and beyond, what are you excited to build? Yeah, well, I'm really excited to be at LPT. We're, we're stoked. And I think any real producer, especially that's listening right now, you know that you're recruited regularly from all different types of brokerages. And so for me, it just never was an option for me to make a move. I was happy where I was and I was building a big business and I was focused on that rather than making a move. And so an opportunity came up for us that I absolutely couldn't turn down and the Robert Palmer himself had just cast such a beautiful vision for what our space 
could look like. And we really felt like our vision aligned with his. Mm -hmm. And that was really what made the jump not only happen, but so easy for us. And you did rebrand, I believe, to Legacy Home Group, right? We did. So we made the move over to LPT and it was a great opportunity to, I don't say that I ever have any regrets, but it was a great opportunity to make changes I felt like I wanted to make, but I wasn't in a place where I wanted to cause confusion for our clients mm -hmm. or for our agents. So when we made the move to LPT and we were already going to have to rebrand everything under the sun, I felt it was a, a really good opportunity to make a change to align better with what our vision was for the future, which was creating a legacy. And so we believe in uh, building trust and crafting legacies is, is really what our goal is for our agents and our team. That's cool. So there's obviously a long-term focus yes. to this brand, yes, right? Absolutely. And I believe we're even going to have you on a panel we're planning on doing later this year to talk about that particular topic, like yeah. what it go, what goes into building a lasting legacy yes. is the theme yes. uh, of that topic. And so when you think about the type of agents that you're going to recruit mm -hmm. and that you're going to be focused on, is that going to play a role in, in, in this new brand now of a legacy mindset? Like, are you looking for a specific type of person that, you know, is in it for the long haul that, yeah. that really wants to commit full time and sees it as something that they want to grow with? Is that mm -hmm. define who you'd be looking for? Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're looking for agents that one, see this as a career, but that see it as a career can, that can make drastic life changes for their legacy. Mm -hmm. And when I started in the industry, a lot of people don't know this, but my husband and I were experiencing extreme financial hardship and real estate was the catalyst into setting us up for a legacy for our own family. Sure. And so we want to teach that to not only the agents that partner on our team, but the agents that partner with us to build a bigger business for themselves, which ult ultimately, like for us, it's not necessarily about the money that can be created in this industry, but it's about the changes that you can make with the money that you can make in the industry. No doubt. Yeah. I always say money is just a tool, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. Kind of exposes who you are as a person many yes. times. Your character tends to show when, when, when you have that excess money. But yes. I know even personally, I've lived a lot of my life with no money and I've lived some of my life with some money, <laughs> maybe not as much as some others, but, right. uh, and there's definitely, um, I prefer life with some money than, than, than with none. That's for, that's for darn sure. Yeah. And I think you can do some really good things if you have the financial capability. And if that yeah. is what your, you know, what your heart even yeah, tells exactly. you to do. Exactly. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah. So it sounds like, so before we talked about how, when your husband was deployed, you did not have kids yet. Yes. That has changed, right? Uh, has changed. Another one of the things in your life that has changed. And so I believe you mentioned off camera that you adopted. Yes, we did. Three? Yes, we did. Three children. How old are yes. they? Seven, nine just turned 10, and 11. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, are they brothers and sisters? They are. Okay. They are. And is, was that always the plan? No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just be real. Absolutely not. No, there was a day where Cody, my husband, and I were laying in bed, and we magically had three children overnight in our house that we didn't know and yeah. that we were wanting just to have a safe, safe place for them to lay their head at night. Yeah. And my husband's next to me having a complete panic attack and I'm laying there like everything's fine. It's going to be okay. We've been married for 11 years. Wait, how did these children just show up at yeah. your house? Well, we, this was we like were an or, the, uh, Okay, we were I got you. So you guys yes. were foster parents and yes. this was through an organization. This is the first children that we had come in our home. I got you. And the backstory that is important to know about us is that we got married really young and we had over a decade together where it was just him and I, and we were like an old married couple. Okay. We're in bed at eight <laughs> reading in bed, mm -hmm. super quiet house, no kids for 10 years. So I'm sure you could imagine, especially if you have your own children, uh, having three children in your house overnight with no, no notice at all <laughs> is a little of the shock. Factor. Yeah, it's a little different. Yes. I mean, I have five kids at home, so you yes. know our house is a zoo, and they're all under ten years old. So oh my gosh, it, it's if wild. you've ever seen that movie Instant Family, I don't know if you. I have that movie. not, but I'm aware. Yes, it, it that's literally was our life. Yes, it, it was. 
And so your that's why your husband was having a panic attack. It was, yeah, he was like next to you. What like, happened to the client? He's like breathing heavy. I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you sweating right now? <laughs> that's crazy. So at some point, uh, how long did they live with you before you decided, you know what? I think the right thing to do is to adopt. You know, God really blessed us because a lot of people that we talked to that fostered children and then eventually adopted them they're in the process for like years in the making mm -hmm. by the end of like our 10th or 11th month with the children that we had fostered we had adopted we had finalized their adoption so wow. it was a crazy roller coaster and you know we were getting to know them at the same time that we ended up adopting them so yeah uh, boys and girls what are the what's the mix two boys and one girl that's awesome yeah and so how long ago did you adopt them then officially? So we officially adopted them a couple of months ago. So right so before, it's still new. yeah, it's still new a couple okay. months before the holidays. And anything changed since like it's become official or <laughs> is it just kind of the way it's been over the last year? They're definitely way more comfortable and we're like officially mom and dad. I think there was some hesitancy of like, right. mom, are you my mom? Are you? Did they have an mom? experience of living with some other foster parents yeah, prior? Yeah, they did. Yeah. So it That's was that hard. uncertainty, you know, and they weren't little babies either. So it was that uncertainty of like, okay, you're telling me this is my forever home, but is it actually my forever home? Yeah, that's awesome though. That's cool. We have five, like I said, of our own, but I've always kind of wanted to adopt at mm -hmm. some point. I, I don't know if my wife, I mean, we have a lot of kids now as <laughs> so maybe we'll say, ever go down um, that road. Slow down. Right. But I have a cousin <laughs> who had four of his own and then he ended up adopting two, a uh, young, uh, a boy and a girl from Peru. And I always oh. thought it was just the coolest thing, you know, that they did. Yeah. And, and really, I mean, obviously there's a lot of kids who go through a lot of hardships out there. So being yeah. able to provide a home and security and stability is definitely a huge, uh, an awesome thing to do. So I applaud you. That's it, awesome. It is also very applicable to your business because there's so many lessons that I've learned from the kids and that I've taught them that I've realized I could do a lot better in my business if I applied the same lessons to myself. No doubt. You thought the so. Marines taught you patience. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> that totally different ball game now. I will not kill my child today. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about this new office, right? That you just opened yes. up for the, for the agency oh and for LPT. So tell everybody about what you're building there, okay. what's exciting about We're it so and what, what it's designed it. to be. So it is the Legacy Nexus Center powered by LPT. This is a place that any real estate agent, it doesn't matter if you're an individual agent, if you're an agent on a team, if you wanna build a team, if you've been in the business for a really long time, if you're brand new, it's for everyone. It is the Legacy Nexus Center and we call it the collaboration movement um, because that's what we're creating. We're creating a space that agents can come and collaborate. We've got a podcast studio. We have a really amazing training room that streams in and out nationally. Um, we've got private office space. We've got co-work space. Nice. Um, so we're going to drop the address or the location so, or anything. Yes. Yes. So it's in Valrico. It's three, six, six, zero Arendelle drive in Valrico. It's right also next to a cute little local brewery. So great spot to do some some happy hours as well with everyone. So we're really, awesome. really excited about it. And it's just for LPT though, correct? Yes, yes. yes. But yes. It, anybody can come check it check out. Check it if out, If you're yeah. just interested and you wanna kinda see like what the space is, I'm really excited about it because I feel like, yeah, you might be able to find some cool stuff closer to Tampa. Right. But you know, if you are, you know, you've got kids and you live, you know, a little bit away from Tampa, it's a great spot that you can do really amazing high tech, um, business mm -hmm. without, you know, driving an hour. So we're really excited about that. One question too, about the switch and the, you know, obviously there is a movement I would say out there of these cloud-based brokerages, mm -hmm. right? Compare an LPT is, is a growing, probably I think one of the fastest growing, if it not is. the fastest yes. growing one, yes. a month, but there's also others. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, you have your traditional brick and mortar type. Correct. I mean, we're happen to be filming right now at a yes. Remax office, right? So yeah. in your experience, cause you've done both now, like yes. what was it about the cloud-based model that really was appealing to you and felt like it was the right move to, to go that route? I mean, one of the biggest things is I think that's where our, our world is going. Mm -hmm. I don't know that there's anyone that will really disagree. And so then the challenge becomes, okay, I know that this is where our industry and the world as a whole, I mean, I remember just a couple of years ago, like robots, what's a robot? And right. now it's like, 
Is, are you a person? Right. Or? Now you don't know who you're talking <laughs> yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. And so I think it's just where our industry is going. But the second piece of that is that I, I believe that there is a desire to have a natural connection with people. And there's a desire, especially, you know, as a new agent, mentorship. Like, who can I follow around and copy everything that they do so I can be successful? And so we wanted to help bridge that gap by the space that we created. So we went to a cloud-based organization, LPT Realty, that has some amazing cloud-based training and platform and all the things, all the bells and the whistles. But there's that piece where it's like, okay, but you're cloud-based, so how do I connect? Yeah. And so we wanted to bridge that gap by the location that we're opening. And yeah. so now That's where that comes in. we have the best of both worlds, which is why I'm so excited about it. Very cool. Yeah. yeah, it is neat because you know that's probably one of the downfalls that somebody would think about right. when they think about joining a cloud-based right. brokerage yeah. is, you know, what people like that camaraderie that you get from exactly. going to the office. And so exactly. the fact that you're building what you're building there can still provide that, right. but you still have a lot of the flexibility and benefits and resources that some of the cloud-based exactly. brings. So I, I can see the value in that. It makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, so a couple kind of rapid fire questions as we put a bow on this All to right. get you out on time. Um, <laughs> This is going to be for people who might not know you as well yet personally and just okay. to learn more about you, Kristen. Okay. So what's your, uh, do you have a favorite book or author or seminar that has made a huge impact on you personally or professionally? I thought you were going to ask me what my favorite color was. That's obvious. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, you know, when I spend my spare time, I typically like to spend it in the word of God. Um, that keeps me grounded in my faith, which I always want to use an opportunity in the industry where I can spend time with someone and how can I better and impact their lives. And I think that that keeps me really grounded. Um, my husband actually just wrote a book, which I don't think I told you about. No. Um, so that is what I'm reading right now. Nice. And it's called Unseen Leadership. Unseen, Unseen Leadership. Unseen Leadership. Cool. And it's a really cool book. He took a little bit of fictitious stories of the people that don't typically get recognized, mm. but sometimes are the best leaders. Mm. And um, I'm eating it up because it's actually That's awesome. teaching me a lot of lessons about how I can actually be a much better leadership. That's very cool. You know. One of my favorite books in a similar vein is a book called The Leader That Had No Title. Um, if you've ever read that. Yeah, that is a similar, it, it sounds it, like it's in a similar. Yeah, it's it's a fiction based yeah. book, but it's, you know, it, it's kind of like, I also, am, uh, my faith is very important to me. So I, I learn a lot from Jesus's parables, yep. right? And, and studying them. And this book is written kind of in a parable type format where it just tells these leadership based fables based on what are the takeaways that you right. can get from listening to them. And so I think right. the guy's name who wrote it was Robin Sharma. I read it years ago and it it's, sounds oh, that actually sounds familiar. So yeah. He's written many books. Actually, yeah. he's, he's been a leadership guru in a way, but it's, that's one of my favorites, the leader who had that. no title. So unseen leadership. I'll have to yes. check that out. It's not out yet. <laughs> oh, it's not yet. Okay. So is this it, is one of the things going to be where, on Amazon soon. Yes, it will. It's one of the things where my husband just dropped it on my desk one day. He was like, so I wrote a book. Can you read it? I'm like, uh, that's awesome. Yes. <laughs> What's your husband's name? Cody. Cody. Okay. Yeah. So, I look forward to checking that out. That's Me right too. down my alley. I love reading about leadership books. John Maxwell is one of my favorite yes. authors too. He does a lot of great we, books. I just went and saw him speak. Um, Did you? And he's, yeah, he's so good. Just he is very good. So much knowledge and wisdom. Yeah, no doubt. He's got a lot to offer for sure. Do you have a favorite food, Kristen, other than sushi? Oh, no. Or is that the one? I love food. So being from Louisiana, yes. we love food. So any good. So you're a Cajun gal? I am. Yeah. Any good gumbo crawfish etouffee. Just what part of Louisiana again did you grow up? Baton Rouge. Okay. I love New Orleans. Yeah. I love bringing the family there. It's just a different vibe, you know? Yeah, it's kind of, really I grew good. up in the Northeast, so the food's <laughs> right, very good. Right. And I like that. It's just a different culture. You feel like, mm -hmm. you just feel like you went into a town that has a, a different, different vibe to it. Yeah, you know? it is. Yeah. So it, it is fun. Um, this is a question that, uh, well, let me ask you this one too. Another uh, get to know you question. Do you have a favorite movie or TV show? Oh, man. Um, you know, I won't name any specific TV show. What I will say is I tell my husband, I'm like, I have zero drama in my life. So sometimes <laughs> I like to watch 
trash TV just a little bit. And <laughs> that's, yeah. That's where you get your drama, huh? Yeah. But I, in all honesty, I actually, and I have some colleagues of mine and my husband also think this is weird, but because I'm on the phone all the time, I really don't watch one TV and two, I actually don't even listen to anything in the car. Yeah. I turn everything off and get, that's my time to get like complete silence. That's cool. So. A fan of the stillness, huh? I am. Yeah. When I get it. Right. And that's hard to find sometimes. Yeah, so the car sure. is a good time to do it for but sure. A lot of people think they're like, that's really weird. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I love it too. Yeah. Uh, even Rob's chiming in. Yeah. He's a big fan of it too. You know, I, I, like, uh, I like to listen to podcasts a lot in the car too. Um, but but I, uh, I try to get my stillness in in the mornings because those part of the morning routines with prayer and Bible study. That's right. where I try to take that time. But that's right. not always easy because, as you know, with kids, mornings, you never know when they're going to wake up. So exactly. things, can, things can break exactly. out pretty quickly. Um, here's a question that I think is perfect for you since it ties right into your theme. And I always find it fascinating for people to think about when that day comes and you're sitting on that rocking chair and you can look back on your business and even mm -hmm. your life. What do you think would be most important to you, Kristen, as far as how you would want to be most remembered? Like what, yeah. what legacy do you think you want to leave? I want to leave a legacy, first of all. Um, I think, you know, a lot of times we want to build a legacy and we're working on it, but we don't necessarily always get the opportunity to leave a legacy. So I don't think that I've arrived for sure. But what I do know is I want, most importantly, my children to remember me as somebody that made a difference not only in our family's life, but other people's lives. That's really important to me. Mm -hmm. And I want our future grandchildren to remember us. You know, I think a lot of times our family members come and go and they pass and, mm -hmm. you know, you don't always even know who they were. Right. And so I hope that our grandchildren and our grandchildren's grandchildren know who we were and that we made a true legacy for our family and helped other families make legacies. That's cool. Yeah. And I think, again, the path that you're on here with this new opportunity and new mm -hmm. business could allow you to hopefully do that for people that you haven't even met yet. Exactly. Uh, in your organization. So it's neat. Yeah. Well, we're going to put a bow on this episode so we can get you out on time. And okay. I appreciate your flexibility with Absolutely. some of our tech challenges today <laughs> and everything that went down. But uh, it was a joy to have you here and we'll have to have you back yes. uh, as the team grows and yes. you have more to share with all that. Yeah. Uh, we end the episode the way we always do, which is with a challenge to the audience, because in my opinion, if you took the time to watch us live on Facebook or YouTube, or you're watching this uh, during one of our episodes, or you're uh, listening to this on an audio somewhere, that if you don't take an action step based on something that you heard in today's conversation, then a lot of the value is lost. And so I'm a huge fan in doing one thing that can move you forward personally or professionally based on our conversation today uh, with Kristen Comstock. Maybe you're somebody who needs to identify, like, what is the niche that you're going to serve? Just like Kristen served the military and the veteran community community at a high level. And because of her background, it made a lot of sense for her. But what is that for you? Right? Maybe that's something you've struggled with as an agent and you don't exactly know where you fit in. Find that niche. And maybe you have to talk to someone like Kristen to help you do that. You know, by the way, uh, if you want to drop your phone number or name, what's the, what's the best way for someone to reach you? So you can reach out, of course, on social media. So it's just Kristen K. Comstock. Um, or you can call, text me at 813-291-0050. Perfect. And I will absolutely answer. Awesome. And we'll get that uh, contact info too on our descriptions as well. But uh, that might be the action step, by the way, just following up and having a conversation uh, with Kristen to kind of learn more, maybe about LPT even, or the brokerage or the new office, or just popping by to check it out and seeing what, what the, all the uh, hubbub is about, right? Uh, but maybe you got to pick up one of these books that we threw out there as another action step. But whatever it might be, take an action step based on this combo to help move you forward. And if you do that, then this time, of course, would have been worth the investment that you took in listening to this podcast. So if you don't already follow us, you can subscribe at Tampa Bay Real Producers. That way you're notified every time a new episode drops, which is weekly, uh, every Friday. And of course, you can follow us all over social media. So we will see you in the next episode of Tampa Bay Real Producers. Stay classy. See you then.